My name is Kaylee, and in this video, I'm going to tell you all about the latest announced new species of human, Homo juluensis. Homo juluensis is proposed to have lived between 300,000 and 50,000 years ago. The name juluensis translates to big head, as this species is defined by a mix of features, most notably by large crania and thick skulls as well as traits quite reminiscent of Neanderthals, as well as characteristics shared with modern humans and Denisovans. So the scientists who made this announcement now actually want to assign the Denisovans into this new proposed species and no longer classify Denisovans as a separate species. They feel the need to assign the, as we have known them to be, Denisovan fossils discovered in Siberia, Laos, Taiwan and Tibet into this new proposed species together with fossils discovered in China. I've recently made an updated thorough deep dive into the Denisovans and if you haven't seen that video I highly recommend watching it so I will add it as a card in the upper right corner and I will link to it in the description down below. There are a lot of hominin fossils found in East Asia and Southeast Asia and these fossils generally date from the late middle Pleistocene to early late Pleistocene. This period in time when looking at it from an evolutionary perspective is often referred to as the muddle in the middle. The middle and late Pleistocene, also known as the late Quaternary, are arguably the most interesting period in human evolution. It's exceptionally rich in fossilized and archaeological remains and it uniquely benefits from insights gained through molecular approaches such as paleogenetics and paleoproteomics that are currently not as applicable in finds from earlier times. But why is this period in time often referred to as the muddle in the middle? Well, the reason for that is the fact that the species level classification of archaic human remains from this time period have been heavily debated and often fossilized are lumped in together, even though they might not actually be from the same species. I'll explain why that has been done a little bit later in the video, because I first want to take a look at this new species a little bit before we continue. So the authors of this paper, which you can find as the top linked source in my description down below, now propose that there are at least four hominin species present in East and Southeast Asia during the late Quaternary period. You know, from the late Middle Pleistocene and early Late Pleistocene. You know, the muddle in the middle. So these species, according to them, are Homo floresiensis, Homo luzonensis, Homo longi, and their newly established Homo juluensis. I have made videos on Homo floresiensis, Homo luzonensis, and Homo longi in the past, and I will leave links to them in the description down below so you can see them. So according to the two authors of the paper, Homo juluensis would have lived somewhere between 300,000 and 50,000 years ago. They say that juluensis hunted wild horses in small groups, made stone tools and possibly processed animal hides for survival. While this new discovery in the world of paleoanthropology was recently announced, the fossils belonging to the species were actually discovered all the way back somewhere between 1976 and 1979 in Zhuzhua Yao and Zhushang in China. I probably butchered those names, my apologies. Therefore it does kind of sound weird to me to say that this is a newly discovered species when the fossils themselves have been discovered around 50 years ago and only the fact that these fossils belong to a new species was announced recently so it's a newly announced discovered species <laughs> something like that it actually reminds me a little bit of the harbin cranium and how the species of Homo longi were announced, even though there are still people who are of the belief that Homo longi should have been classified as a Denisovan instead of a new human species. So why do I think about the discovery of Homo longi when it comes to this discovery? Well, the Harbin cranium, also known as the Dragon Man skull, was discovered all the way back in the 1930s. But the man who discovered the skull had hid it in a well and revealed its location of the skull on his deathbed. So the skull was only recovered in 2018 and subsequently analyzed. 
If you want to learn more about the dragon man skull, the Harbin cranium and the announcement of the species of Homo longi, I do recommend watching that video on it. I'll put it as a card in the upper right corner and like I said earlier, it's linked in the description down below. So let's go back to Homo juluensis and why this species was announced. So the authors of the Nature publication are research professor Wu of the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology at the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing, China, and Professor Bei of the Department of Anthropology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in Honolulu, Hawaii. They propose that the hominin fossils discovered in Eastern Asia have a greater degree of morphological variability during the late Quaternary, which was around 300,000 to 50,000 years ago. You know, the model in the middle, the late middle Pleistocene and early late Pleistocene, that kind of period. During the 1950s, discussions resulting in the 1950 Cold Springer Harbor Symposium led to hominin fossils being more conservatively lumped together into broader, more inclusive categories. So it often happens that paleoanthropologists lump hominin fossils together from the late Quaternary instead of splitting them up. Even though it is often the case that there are quite some morphological differences between fossils and thus lumping them together doesn't always make complete sense. Like for instance, two decades ago, in 2004, the field of late Quaternary Eastern Asian Paleoanthropology was jolted when Homo floresiensis was announced after fossils of this new species were found on the island of Flores in Indonesia. Three years later, in 2007, another new species was announced, Homo luzonensis, after fossils of this new species were discovered on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. And then in 2021, Homo longi was announced as a new species after the Harbin cranium was thoroughly researched with non-destructive X-ray fluorescence and strontium isotope analysis, as well as direct uranium-thorium dating of various points of the skull. The Harbin cranium, or dragon man skull, you know, Homo longi, is roughly contemporary with other Chinese specimens from the Jiahe, Jinishuan, Dali and Hualong cave. So therefore, these two scientists who announced the new species of Homo juluensis want to include the fossils from Dali, Jinishuan, and the Walong Cave in the Homo longi species. But they want to include the fossils that are currently assigned to the species of the Denisovans found in Siberia, Laos, Tibet, as well as the fossils found in Jiahe in China and Pengu in Taiwan into the newly proposed species of Homo juluensis. Let me preface that this is my personal opinion. Now I understand the need to improve science communication and the reclassification of species, that we need to clarify the hominin fossil record that used to put fossil remains in three categories, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalensis, or Homo sapiens. But while the fossil record keeps growing, I am also wary of a hypothesis like the remains of the currently proposed Denisovans suddenly belonging to the newly proposed species of Homo juluensis. Even though we don't have fossilized teeth or jaw fragments from juluensis, we have cranial fragments of this newly proposed species. And we don't have cranial fragments from the Denisovan fossils because we have teeth and jaw fragments. So how sure can we be that Homo juluensis and the Denisovans are actually the same species? We need more fossils and more research before a hypothesis like this should be made public. As of this point in time, I personally do not see any reason for this hypothesis being made public. In fact, I am personally afraid that this could harm the perception that most people have of anthropologists and paleoanthropologists, because there is not enough evidence to argue this reclassification. We know of a first-generation hybrid individual with a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father who lived around 90,000 years ago, whose remains were discovered at the Denisova cave in Siberia. So if the Denisovans are to be integrated into the species of Homo juluensis, that would mean that Deni, the hybrid girl, would be a first-generation hybrid with a Neanderthal mother and a Homo juluensis father. But before we go that route, we need more research. If possible, DNA from the Homo juluensis fossils to be studied and compared to the DNA that we have of the currently known Denisovans. This hybrid girl, Denny, the 50-50 split between Neanderthals and Denisovans into one person, one little girl, 
we know that because of the DNA, I've not been able to find any information of Juluense's DNA, so I believe that the researchers have not been able to extract DNA as of this point in time. Maybe when the technology improves, they will be able to do this. It might be the case that Juluenses and Denisovans are not the same species, but as long as we don't have DNA and as long as we don't have more fossils of Denisovans, we won't know for sure and we shouldn't make a hypothesis like this public. I do understand the need for the announcement of Homo Juluenses, as the large crania and thick skull isn't a characteristic reminiscent of the other species who have lived in the same area around the same time. But I'm personally very unsure that Denisovans aren't a separate species from Juluenses. But hey, that's my non-expert take. Do with that what you will. I am just a high school dropout who is passionate about ancient history and human evolution. You know, that's just me. So my question to you is, what do you think of this newly announced species of Homo Juluenses? And do you feel like Denisovans are a part of this new species? or if they are a separate species, please let me know in the comments down below and share this video far and wide, you know, that would help me out a lot. And please take a look at the merch store at historywithkaylee.com and get your History with Kaylee merch, like for instance, this awesome homeowner lady t-shirt that I'm currently wearing. So get your own or get a hoodie or a beanie or whatever. And with that said, if you enjoyed watching this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner, or click one of the links in the description down below, or click a video in the end card. I would also like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. Happy New Year! I am back! Uh, yeah, I won't disappear for as long as I did uh, again, but yeah, my body, my ankylosing spondylitis was fun. No, no, it wasn't. It's very cold and wet with rain in the Netherlands and it's uh, taking a toll on my body and that's not fun, but it's going to be fine. I will be fine and I will try and make more videos in the uh, upcoming year because I plan to make at least 51 videos, which equates to a little less than a video a week and I don't want to mess that up because at the end of this year I would like to have 300 videos on the channel and maybe, you know what, maybe 300,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Okay, thank you. Bye.